Can you create an AI in Minecraft? Well, yes, you can, and today I'm going to show you how. Hello, my name is Vortex Warp, and welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone video. And today I present to you something rather interesting, which is machine learning in Minecraft using a completely survival friendly redstone. So, behind me, you can see a fairly standard rock, paper, scissors machine, and the player can enter either rock, paper, or scissors, and then the machine will make a selection. And depending on who wins, we'll get a different lamp to light up. So if the player wins, we shall get this lamp to light up. And if the machine wins, we'll get this lamp to light up. And if it's a draw, both of the lamps will light up. But what's interesting about this machine is that A, obviously the machine will make the selection before the player. And in that way, um, it means that the machine isn't just basing its choice off of what the player picks in order to gain an advantage. But also, the probability of the chance of us either getting rock, paper, or scissors from the machine will change based on what the player played in the previous two rounds. So, over here is the main bulk of the machine, and this is the part which determines the probabilities. So, we have a bunch of different slices, and depending on these eight inputs over here, so that's either rock, paper, or scissors previously entered, um, and then whether the machine won or not, and then for the round before that, either rock, paper, or scissors, and whether the machine won or not. And what we actually have here is that we'll select a different slice depending on which of these outputs are active. In each of these slices, we have a dropper. Um, and in that dropper is a different weighting distribution of rocks, papers, and scissors, which are signified by the different items. So that's iron blocks, um, cobblestone blocks, and wool blocks. So let's give this machine a try. So if we selected paper, we can see that the machine actually selected scissors. So this time the machine actually won. So we get that to light up over there. And then we have to wait for the machine to make its selection. The machine makes its selection. And then once that's done, these lamps will uh, turn off and then we'll be able to enter a new selection in. So the lamps have turned off over here. And now what we can do is enter a new selection in. And let me just show you that the information is stored in the machine now. So it's stored that we entered paper last time. And it's also stored that the machine won last time. And then it's shifted the values from over here to over here. So the time before we played rock and the machine lost. And based on this, um, it will have selected a new slice over there, which will means that when this line powers, we'll get a different item through the dropper which will go into this item sorter, determining the selection of the machine. So now if we were to select, let's say scissors, the machine selected this time rock and wow, the machine is being really lucky because I haven't actually trained this machine, um, which is what will need to be done uh, in order for the machine to get better. So it should get better over time. So this time the machine's won again. So if we wait a bit, we can see the machine has recorded that it's won. The player played scissors. And then last time we played paper and the machine also won. So that will select that slice over there, which has a different distribution of items in the dropper. Now, we don't set this distribution manually. At the start of the machine, we had 10 of each item in the dropper. When the machine wins, it rewards the machine by putting the choice that it selected back into the dropper um, and putting three of that item in rather than the standard one uh, that was extracted. If we lose, then we don't put any back in. So every time the machine loses, it loses one of the chances of it selecting that item again. And every time the machine wins, it will reward itself. So it's more likely to pick that choice in that situation in the future. So that way, the machine should get better and better over time. Now, you might be thinking, hold on a minute. This doesn't sound useful at all. When you play rock, paper, scissors, don't you just pick the choices randomly? Well, I don't think this is the case. I'll give you an example where it could be useful. So say a player has picked paper twice in a row, and on both of those times they have lost to the machine. There's a high chance on the next round they're probably not going to pick paper because they've lost twice in a row, even if it's subconscious. This will give the machine a slight advantage if it adjusts its stats to reflect this. And there may be many other cases um, where similar things happen to this, and it'll be interesting to actually see the results of the machine once it's been trained over time. So as you can see, the machine may actually do stuff that a regular player playing rock, paper, scissors might not cotton on to. So how does it actually work? Well, I, I assume you'd figure out how this works. We've just got a bunch of uh, encoded signals over here. And when these lines power on and off, it powers these observers, which 
tr trigger the state of the pistons, which either move the sand up or down. The sand's positioned in a specific way so that for every different possible output through here, we get a different output through here because it powers through this side. So for this slice, um, we happen to have all the blocks up on the slice and each one of these corresponds to a different situation. That powers this uh, over here, which puts the block over this dropper. When the player makes its selection, which is what should happen first, it actually powers here, which powers into that block, which powers this redstone line. That means that we get a different signal strength depending on which button we pressed. We, if we press this one through this output, we get a signal strength of 13, 14 and 15 respectively, depending on which output we select. Um, the machine will also select an output. Um, and what we have over here is a comparing the two outputs. So this is selected two, a uh, signal strength of two, which is the equivalent of paper. And when we select, if we selected uh, paper, it would be equivalent of two. Um, and this circuit just processes that and outputs here the state of the win of the machine and the player. And this is actually not my design, so I'll leave a link to this rock, paper, scissors machine uh, win detection system down in the description. Um, but everything else is, and I actually had to build it uh, off of the video because there wasn't a tutorial included with the video. All these lines simply redirect this down here to the input of the machine. And we have a bunch of locked repeaters that are unpowered when we press the button. So it basically shifts the signal through and it will shift it into here. But before we do that, we actually need to decide whether we reward the machine for its selection or not. When the machine makes a selection in the form of an item going over these item sorters, we'll actually get an output through this slice. We'll get three of the items selected dispensed. So say stone was uh, selected we get three of those uh, dispensed out into this water stream. This water stream goes up into this dropper and these items will simply wait here. So the machine has actually selected paper for the next round and that's why paper is waiting in this dropper. Once the selection is made, these will actually be sent out once the player's made their selection and go over the top of all of the hoppers which go into the droppers. But how do we decide whether an item will go into a dropper or whether it won't? Well, that's what these circuits over here are for. Each of the hoppers is locked by two torches, one here and one here. The bottom torch is uh, toggled depending on whether the machine has won or lost and the top torch is toggled depending on whether that slice is selected. So in this case, this torch is actually off because this is the slice that the items were selected from. So this is the dropper that we want to put the items back into if the machine wins. If the machine wins, we'll also want to unlock all of the slices um, using uh, the torches here. So we'll actually power this line over here so that the item can flow in because the hopper will be unlocked by both of these torches. If however the player wins, this line will not be active and so the line will be locked. So all of the items will just come off out the edge here and it won't go back into the dropper. So that's how the probabilities are adjusted. And there's a few more things to go over. For example, we've got a hopper clock down here which releases a second shift register that uh, puts the new outputs into here. Because obviously we don't want to do it before we put the items back in there because it will go into the wrong module. So we've got a second shift register that unlocks that and then we've got a um, longer hopper clock over here which will actually power the correct module that's been selected over here to make the new selection like this and that will travel down um, after a set amount of time. So this will go into here and this is where we actually choose the signal strength for the machine to select its option. So depending which item comes through, we either have rock, we have paper, or we have scissors, which are represented by the iron blocks. And that will power a different sort of module. This will produce a different signal strength through this line here because the different modules are further away from this comparator. We then subtract a certain amount using this cake here so that it reads uh, four, three, or two. This over here simply stores the value and propagates it through over to the comparing's place. And also it powers into this line here. When this sand block is up, it will actually power into this red coder. And this red coder simply selects one of these lamps to display um, the output based on the signal strength to the player. So this sand block will go up when the player's made the selection to show the player what selection the machine made. And that will display on these three redstone lamps here. And that's simply what this little circuit over here does. We also power this line over here and that will actually release um, this circuit over here. So it will lift this block up which will unpower this, which will store the signal strength of the selection. Because previously, say we'd entered um, 
uh, a signal strength of three, this will record that um, until we're ready to enter our next selection, in which case it will reset it. The final thing this actually does is it powers these pistons, which are currently down. So there's actually a block in front of these repeaters here. And that means that you can't make a selection unless these blocks are down. Um, and that prevents the user from pressing buttons whilst the machine is still selecting its choice. And the way that's toggled is with this over here, which is a cauldron that's pushed across whenever there's still a selection stored in the machine. And this is also coincidentally what happens to uh, turn these lamps on over here. So that's all for this system. If you want to see me build it on a multiplayer server at some point, uh, make sure to put it down in the comments below because it's something that I would be interested in doing at some point in the future just so we can train the machine up with actual real people. But that's going to be it for today's episode. If you've enjoyed, remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Before I actually go, I want to leave you with a link down in the description to the video which actually inspired me to create this contraption in Minecraft, which is a video by Matt Parker on the matchboxes that learn. And these matchboxes actually learn to play noughts and crosses by adjusting the number of coloured beads in them depending on what the player selects. I was originally going to do noughts and crosses for my machine, but I decided it would be a lot more complicated, so I decided just to do rock, paper, scissors.